How's it going? It's been a while. I've been busy with other things and had some camera issues and whatnot, but here we are. Um, funny story. Uh, I actually, this when this corona thing hit, which there's other underlying issues with the market and whatnot, I actually sold out, went 100% cash two days before uh, the crash or whatever a correction it's not even the it's not even the crash that i keep uh that i talk about this is the prelude to it um i think that we're going to experience the helicopter money i think i was waiting for the fed to jump in they already have i believe today they are going to do a like a half 50 pace or like a 50 basis point cut or something like that and it's just the first of many all the way to zero probably but um it's very, it's interesting. Yeah. So anyway, just luckily sold out. Just how I was doing a lot of you know research on what was going on, and you know it, it's not the coronavirus. It's that is like the straw that breaks the camel's back in this initial phase of this, or you know the tide kind of goes out, and then you kind of see everybody naked or whatever you want to call it. But it's not, it's not, uh, it's not the reason for the whole sell off. There is some bit when it comes well, every time, man. Every time somebody texts. Finally get the camera working. Don't hear from anybody for a while, and bam. But anyway, um, so I just started nibbling back in the market because once they start stimulating, not that this next stimulus is going to go necessarily all into the market. Now, because now we're having production issues, so the supply of goods and services is decreased. I mean, they talk about demand. So doing this, you know, if these companies take that these low interest rates and they move production over here, or into a more sustainable area where uh, or diversify their supply chains that's a that could be positive but in the short term i mean you just can't flip switch on a factory so it takes a while to get that stuff built up uh in the short run when consumers or businesses use this or if you're lucky a business but consumers utilize this for uh for consumption or whatnot on finite amount of products that's when you see price increases that's when you have to see strain shortages and whatnot so we'll see how this plays out but i can see this being that catalyst with you know the mainstream calls inflation which inflation is really a monetary phenomenon uh the more money you have in the system that's inflation the less money that's you know i mean if we're talking about the size of the monetary base or or just mon monetary base in general whether it be you know m1 m2 m3 or, or in layman's like you know whether it be the actual base currency at the federal reserve or the currency that's from the uh fractional reserve system that's out there um but what we what you know if you watch cnbc or anybody else the inflation the price increase overall and you might actually see that especially and it might not be just in the stock market because that's where we have been seeing it. it might be in uh consumer goods this time and uh we will see how that plays out uh hopefully it doesn't. I don't want any of this thing to happen, but when you see these things happen, this is textbook. Um, if you take out the ideological bounds, where there are team D team, I don't care. I mean, I like Trump. I voted for him, and I'm, the way it looks, I'm going to be voting for him again. But uh, I think he's got this whole... He's either got a fundamental... He's either playing a role or he has a, a, a misunderstanding of what's actually going on and what we're setting up for. And I think once the Fed stops back in we probably have another few years and then we will really see that crash um the reset i guess you call it uh, i don't even know if it'd be that but uh it, what i've i'll tell you what i nibbled on i mean i don't i'm not telling you to go out there and buy anything but i i got out of everything 100 percent cash and i went back into some of the REIT stuff to get some kind of yield because i know they're going down now i have a bank account that i don't know what i'm going to do with uh with money that's making like one in three quarters percent now it's going to be like one and a quarter maybe um yeah you know, I, I went in some reits and then i also i always have gold and silver i just held on to that stuff and it's i mean i don't look at it as investment so i don't look at the, the dollar value necessarily of gold I just a store of value everybody's like well i'm going up four or five percent i don't really care that's a i don't care about that necessarily i know what the gold is money and whether the fluctuations in dollar terms you know you gotta it depends on how you think about it whether it's going to be good for you but i i hold on to it I'll always have some sort of value and silver as well and then i also have some hard currency and uh if we learned maybe not from this last recession but from the great depression era um you want to have some cash on hand like actually on hand uh and 
in case something happens. So I keep some of that. And then uh, when I, the other in my brokerage account, I think what I got. So I got some the REITs and then um, I had one other thing. I think I got some volatility because I just made some money on vol uh, playing the VIX and whatnot and uh, some leverage VIX stuff. So I think volatility at this point, usually it spikes and it comes down. Uh, a little bit, which has already done that. So if you played the puts on that, you could make some money. Um, now, I don't know what you actually do to get yield for just cash that's sitting there. They're like driving you into risk assets. That's what happens when you don't have a market-based price of money or interest. You, you're you starting to push people out on those spectrums, and that's what's going to happen even further. And it's really going to destroy the retirement community. I mean, come on. Now you really can't make anything on idle cash. And if you're retired, you don't want to take this kind of risk. And sometimes you know, there was a day when you could live off that interest. Um, I don't know, man. It's hairy out there. And if you listen to mainstream, it sounds like everything's good. But uh, if you're out there in the real world, there you better be educated about it. You just can't rely on – you better be cash flowing. And you better uh, get your own house in order. Anyway. That was my take on what the coronavirus too. We can get into that. So, this is my opinion, um, just from the research I've done. It seems as though, and just prior knowledge from you know, some military service and just some people that I really respect their opinion, it appears as though this is a weapon that got out of the lab, whether it be from some guy that was trying to sell body parts or whatever from there in wuhan or or just escape inadvertently and that has happened before even in the western if you look it up uh i think there was a smallpox small almost a smallpox outbreak in the uk there's been a number of them there i think there was an instance uh a span of two years where it's like every other week there was some kind of uh safety violation or protocol violation where there's a potential of a lethal pathogen escaping the lab and you just think that's a Western countries where we like to assume that we have better protocols, that we have better uh, ways of controlling that, uh, the people that go in and out and, you know, and just the, in, in general, the um, parameters that we use to make sure we don't release something that can kill millions of people. Now in China, I don't know what their, that was their level four. That was the only lab that they had there that is capable of housing uh, cer uh, you know, certain things i believe we sold some of this stuff to them and from what i've heard it's based on the sars virus and then it also has some elements of hiv i mean i'm not a biologist by any means i've taken a lot of biology classes but i don't necessarily understand the structural components besides the fact that the coronavirus has uh you know these looks like a uh, crown that's what corona is and that's how it uses the attach on the cells uh but What's what really got my hairs up on this was the incubation period, which I don't know how many viruses you find out in nature naturally that have such a inc long incubation period and then a re um, in infection, a re uh, I don't know the word, you know what I mean, where you can actually get it again. Your your immune system doesn't necessarily recognize or the t you know you build these T cells or the, these platforms that your body can recognize these viruses and attack them eventually. Well, it seems like you can get re it can flare back up or whatever. It's almost like it's in your system and it comes back here. You get reinfected for lack of a better term. But uh, so initially I was, it seemed, and then the lack of information, it just seemed like there was something wrong. And then some people have, that I respect have put two and two together. And then some whistleblowers that came out, of course, naturally expunged from the internet, from the communist party there, uh, that this could be a release into the uh an inadvertent release i think if they're developing this as a weapon i don't think china would do this necessarily right now and be so um it might they might serve some purpose for them but i just don't think it was in i think it was inadvertently released by an employee there um and we'll see the ramifications uh hopefully i hope for the best especially out here i don't think the united states is really reporting correct numbers it just doesn't seem like we were testing that many people and uh and from what it seems like this is a very it's this is easily uh what's the it can pass easily they found it on a, like a dog it, now not, not necessarily that it infected the dog but maybe it's traveling there it has an ability to uh maintain 
are alive or if a virus is really alive it's kind of like on that precipice whether it's actually a living thing or not but it, it can be tra- traversed it can traverse through you know its environment via you know like a carrier like a dog um or a person but the incubation period is pretty it can be asymptomatic and carry it and still pass on viral shedding um through uh, and then get it like you having to rub your eyes you having to touch something and who knows i mean this is this is pretty crazy um but it's unlike anything else. So it, initially, that's what I thought. And some people I respect have come up with similar theories. Now, will we ever know? Will the Chinese ever come in? But it, they kind of play into that hand when they don't let us get involved. They don't pass this information. And uh, pass us any information. Uh, what you'd think they'd be open up if this was such serious, dire circumstances and try to get everybody on board so we can all work as a team to try to solve this issue. But they seem to be holding a lot of information. Uh, so I'm not telling you that that's what it is. That's my opinion. I advise you to look into it, to do a little research outside of the alphabet networks uh, and look at it as a possible bioweapon. And if it is, or even if it's not, this can give you an idea of what can possibly happen because there are labs out there that are developing uh, bioweapons uh, and there's good papers on f- uh, former Chinese generals that talk about the new era of warfare being biological and that this is what they would want to develop something that but in in i believe in the one paper that i've uh i've heard of it, it they talk about actually being able to target segments of the population whether that be ethnical ethnic or age or um even gender um i don't know how you do that i'm not like i said i'm not a biochemist or you know any any of that but I know that there's people working on this stuff, and uh, the militaries around the world are um, aware of this and might even have their own programs, depending on what nation. I know we have some sort of program, and I could bet your Spanish land grant that the Chinese do within this lab, so who knows. Anyway, there's a plethora of information from non-mainstream sources, whether we want to see the or kind of delve into what the origins are of this, or just what just ways of thinking outside the box and not everything is rosy you know so uh and then with regards to the market you need to be nimble you need to do your research and you need to not just listen to cnbc um there is ways to make money it, but now we're going to be searching for a lot of yield they're going to push us out in the risk spectrum risk, risk spectrum and i've like told some people be prepared for helicopter money i mean these guys are going to come in there but what does those lower interest rates what does monetary stimulus actually do if companies use that for factory building that's great but they can't just flip a switch. What is it going to be used for? A lot of it's going to be used for uh, uh, the short-term stimulus is consumer-driven. Are you're going to be buying what is available now, and that will drive the prices up on that until you can produce more. So hey, we got it. You can't just throw money at a problem, a production problem, a supply problem, and expect that to be solved. And in fact, you end up exacerbating it. Um, at least for the consumer standpoint, um, you start. Instead of you need to you, actually the right play would probably be to take some liquidity out of the market and maybe well a free market would be obviously the best thing but you want to keep that stabilized stabilize the market so you want the amount of you want your production to be kind of stabilized with the currency so there's some kind of I guess mono, some kind of backing there but it's not even we all know that's fractional reserve and it's just based, debt based uh, money but you would think you want to keep it kind of stable but instead of throwing more at a finite pie. Cause that's what we're doing but uh anyway stay nimble keep if it went in doubt go cash even though you'll be losing it uh, a little bit on on that but be nimble with it uh cap some cash reserves and uh and look for some things that you feel comfortable investing in and um uh, try to do something invest in yourself is, is what i've been preaching to people because if you don't understand anything maybe you need to you know start your own business or or do something for yourself to make you more marketable and be able to uh, be able to make it through any downturn or any an inflationary spike um, that we might see in the future. Anyway, peace out.